In this video, we are going to talk about acute appendicitis, anatomy and histology of the appendix, causes of acute appendicitis, pathophysiology, uh, clinical features, diagnosis, complication, and management of acute appendicitis. Right, so uh, the appendix, is, it begins to bud off from the cecum around the sixth week of embryological development right so uh, its location is the terminal end of cecum where the tenure join together uh, about two centimeters below the ileocecal orifice its length is from two centimeters to 20 centimeters right but it's variable the diameter of the appendix is three to eight millimeters. The size of the lumen, one to three millimeters, like the size of a match stick, and the luminal capacity is usually less than one mil. The appendix actually have a mesentery called the meso appendix, right? So the meso appendix is an extension of the mesentery that contains the appendicular artery of uh, Sishakalam, right? It's a branch of the ileocecal artery, which is derived from the superior mesenteric artery, right? So you can see here the ileocecal artery, and it gives the appendicular artery here. You can see it within the appendix mesentery, right? The meso appendix. So you need to remember that the appendicular artery is an end artery. Right. It doesn't have any collateral. So if there is any thrombosis in this region, this will lead to formation of gangrene. That's gangrenous appendicitis. We will talk about it later. It's a special kind. Right. So the base of the appendix remains in a fixed position with respect to the cecum, whereas the tip of the appendix can end up in various positions. Right, so uh, some of those uh, positions include the following, right? So here on A is retrocecal appendix, and it's the most common, right? On B, this one is periilial appendix. On C here is a postilial appendix. Uh, this one is preilial. This one is postilial, right? Not peri, but a pre. Right, uh, then on D, that's pelvic appendix. On E is subsecal appendix. And the last one on F is parasecal appendix here. The appendix is actually composed of same layers as the colon, right? From inside mucosa, submucosa, uh, inner circular layer of the muscles and outer longitudinal layer and outside there is serosa right you can see here right uh from outside serous layer muscularis externa and you can see muscularis mucosa here lymphoid tissue right so just focus on lymphoid that's the most important one Right, so the submucosal layer of the appendix is lymph follicles, right? So when these uh, lymph follicles enlarge in response to infection, the swollen submucosal layer can block the lumen of the appendix, right? Although many people claim that uh, appendix is just a vestigial organ, it is actually an immunological organ and it secretes uh, immunoglobulin IgA right but uh, it's not an essential organ and it can be removed without any immunological compromise acute appendicitis is the inflammation of the appendix it is one of the most common acute surgical diseases and it is common in young white males at the peak of lymphoid tissue growth Right, and the second peak in the incidence of appendicitis occurs in elderly. 
Fiber rich diet prevents appendicitis while lesser fiber increases the chance of appendicitis. Uh, it is common in May and August, right? It's seasonal variation. That's why sometimes it's called uh, epidemic appendicitis, right? Let's talk about etiology, right? So it can occur okay, because of obstruction of the lumen of the appendix, obstructive appendicitis, right? So you can see obstruction maybe because of uh, the presence of a thicker lip, that's a small, thin bow of stool, right? It's most common cause in adults, right? And this one is usually associated with gangrene or perforation or strictures, right? And uh, obstruction can also occur because of tumors, gallstones, foreign bodies like seeds. Adhesions at the base of the cecum can also cause obstructive appendicitis. Appendicitis can also occur uh, if there are uh, viral infections, right? So this will be associated with mucosal edema, right? And inflammation, that's lymphoid hyperplasia, if there is bacterial infection. Those bacteria include E. coli, enterococci, streptococci, and anaerobic streptococci, clostridium wildshire, and bacterioides. There is pseudo-appendicitis, right? Pseudo is means it's false appendicitis. Uh, is this one, okay, due to acute ileitis uh, following Yersinia enterocolitica infection. This can also occur okay, due to ileal Crohn's disease. Pathogenesis, right? So we said appendicitis can either arise due to obstruction as obstructive causes and non-obstructive causes, right? So obstructive, we say this is obstruction and most common uh, cause of obstruction is fecal lip, right? Non-obstructive causes, uh, is this will be cataral appendicitis. Let's start with obstructive appendicitis, right? The luminal obstruction due to either a lymphoid obstruction in young uh, people and fecal lip in older patients uh, will lead to increased mucus production and inflammation, right? So you need to remember appendiceal mucosa continues to secrete normally despite being obstructed. As inflammatory fluid collects inside the lumen, there is distension and increase in intraluminal pressure, which will lead to blockage of venous and lymphatic drainage. The resident bacteria will also multiply rapidly, increasing the intraluminal pressure. The intraluminal pressure will eventually exceed the capillary and venule pressure. However, the arteriolar uh, blood will continue to flow that's causing vascular congestion and engorgement. Impaired blood supply will result uh, in mucosal ischemia and ulceration with ultimate bacterial translocation or invasion. The bacteria will then spread through the uh, submucosa and muscularis mucosa, uh, resulting in acute obstructive appendicitis. Inflammation and ischemia progress to involve the serosal surface of the appendix, right? And remember the meso appendix, right? So uh, the meso appendix, I said it contains the appendicular artery, right? So this artery can thrombose and cause ischemic necrosis, which can cause gangrene, perforation of the tip or base of the appendix, and peritonitis, right? So here you are looking at uh, gangrenous appendicitis. After perforation, there is a localization by the greater omentum and dilated ileum. This can superate forming an appendicular abscess, right? If pus is not present inside, it's referred to as the appendicular mass, right? So this is the appendicular abscess. If there is pus inside, if there is no pus, then it's 
appendicular mass. Acute appendicitis with blockade at the opening of the lumen results in mucus collecting inside the lumen of the appendix, resulting in its enlargement. Right? This will be referred to as the mucous seal of the appendix. Right? So you can see mucus seal inside here. There is mucus. Right? There is mucus. Muco appendix. The second one is non-obstructive appendicitis, right? So acute inflammation of mucous membrane with secondary infection without obstruction will cause acute non-obstructive appendicitis. This may lead to resolution, right? It can just reverse to normal or fibrosis, recurrent appendicitis. It can actually lead to the first type obstructive appendicitis. In rare cases, it can uh, uh, cause a gangrene, peritonitis, and suppuration. Right, so far we talked about obstructive acute appendicitis, non-obstructive acute appendicitis. Right, the next three will be recurrent appendicitis, subacute appendicitis, stump appendicitis. Right, so recurrent appendicitis, uh, this will be repeated attacks of non-obstructive appendicitis, which will lead to fibrosis, adhesions, causing recurrent appendicitis, right, again and again. Uh, Subacute appendicitis is the milder form of acute appendicitis. Right, so after surgery, the stump that remains will undergo inflammation again. Right, so that will be stump appendicitis. According to morphology, we have three types simple appendicitis, acute phlegmonas appendicitis, and acute gangrenous appendicitis. In acute simple appendicitis, the appendix is slightly tense, its serous membrane is hyperemic and edematous. Inside the appendicular cavity, there is odorless serous fluid, right? That's macroscopic. Microscopically, there will be mucosal edema and sometimes erosions. Acute phlegmonous appendicitis. On examination, the appendix is thickened, tense, hyperemic, and covered with fibrin. There is pus in the appendicular cavity. There is turbid, serous, or purulent exudate in the abdominal cavity. The peritoneum is lack of luster in some areas, right? It's shiny, uh, like uh, that area, it's, it's not that shiny, right? And microscopically, there will be leukocyte infiltration of the appendicular tissue. Uh, purulent destruction of its walls in some areas. In acute gangrenous appendicitis, on examination, there will be necrosis of sections of the appendix or possibly perforation of its walls. Right? Uh, there is necrotic detritus in the lumen of the appendix. There is purulent necrotic condens in the abdominal cavity. Microscopically, there is thrombosis of the appendix vessels and necrotic changes on its walls. Clinical features of acute appendicitis, right? So this acute appendicitis is rare before the age of two, right? And is common in other age groups, right? For example, like from 5 to 35, it's very common, right? So there is a Murphy's triad. Murphy's triad is actually a collection of three signs and symptoms of acute appendicitis. Thus, pain, vomiting, and high temperature, PVT. Murphy's triad, you need to remember it. Pain, vomiting, and this high temperature. Right, so the symptoms first. Pain is the earliest symptom. Right, so the visceral pain starts around the umbilicus because that's uh, where there is T10 distribution, 
right? So this occurs due to obstruction and distension of appendix and stimulation of visceral afferent stretch fibers. The pain is dull ache or colic, presumably from obstruction of the appendiceal lumen. After a few hours, somatic pain occurs in right iliac fossa due to irritation of the parietal peritoneum because of inflamed appendix, right? So this is where the right iliac fossa is located. The pain will be severe and if there is a uh, like diffuse the spread of infection into the general peritoneal cavity, right? So the pain, it moves around like uh, it changes, right? So not all patients will experience this shift of pain. And the presentation may start with the discomfort in the right lower quadrant, right? So sometimes uh, acute appendicitis is known as the chameleon of the abdomen. Chameleon, it changes its color, right? So the there is a variation of pain location in acute appendicitis in most cases, but not all patients experience this shift of pain. Retrocecal appendicitis may cause pain which is higher in the right abdomen, whereas appendicitis located in the pelvis may cause vague pelvic discomfort. Patients often report that the movement and coughing will induce sharp exacerbation of the pain, right? So they usually lie in one position. If they move or cough, pain will increase, right? So that's pain. Then vomiting, right? So vomiting usually accompanied with nausea. This will occur due to a reflex pyelorospasm. The patient can also have anorexia, constipation, uh, usual feature, or sometimes diarrhea in 20% of the cases. Right? Diarrhea is common in postilial or pelvic appendix. Temperature, right? I said pain, vomiting, and temperature, right? So this temperature, the patient will have fever, low-grade fever, uh, tachycardia, Urinary frequency, right? So this will be because of our bladder irritation from the conduct with inflamed appendix. Right, so the signs, common signs include tachycardia, mild pyrexia, right? A high temperature of more than 39 degrees Celsius will indicate probable abscess formation or some other diagnosis such as viral illness. The tongue is usually coated and moist, right? If there is development of obstructive process in the appendix, it will be dry. An appendicular abscess or mass, that's phlegmon, if uh, present, may be palpated in the right iliac fossa. Abdominal tenderness and rebound tenderness in the right iliac fossa, right, is uh Bloomberg sign or release sign, right? To do this, you ask the patient to cough while watching the facial expression. If the coughing produces obvious pain, the patient should be asked to indicate the site of maximum pain. And in acute appendicitis, the patient will point at the right iliac fossa. Rebound tenderness may be elicited by pressing gently onto the right lower quadrant of the abdomen and then suddenly releasing the hand right so if you, you need to watch the patient because on a removing the patient will feel pain after removing right another approach is to do percussion in the same area right the response is same and percussion is kind right than that press and release right okay so there are some pathognomonic signs of acute appendicitis on pressing left iliac fossa, pain occurs in the right iliac fossa due to shift of bowel loops, which irritates the peritoneum, right? So you press on the left iliac fossa, then pain will be on the right, right? So this will suggest acute appendicitis, right? So it's called Rolfsing sign, right? Rolfsing sign. The next one is called sore sign.
right so this one is specific for retrocecal appendicitis right so hyper extension of the hip causes pain in the right iliac fossa the patient will get relief by flexing the right thigh at the hip which relaxes the psoas muscle right that's why it's called psoas sign obturator sign this one is specific for pelvic appendix internal rotation of the right hip causes pain in the right iliac fossa due to irritation of the obturator internal muscle right obturator test or obturator sign the next one is called uh, Razdowski sign right so this is pain in the right iliac region during percussion of the anterior abdominal wall this one is easy right this one is called uh, Batomia Michelson sign. So in this method, you ask the patient to lie uh, on the left, right? On the left lateral decubitus. And then you do deep palpation, right? So there will be worsening of pain in the right iliac region. Okay. Uh, the next one is called Sitkovsky sign. Sitkovsky sign. This is appearing or worsening of pain in the uh, right iliac region by changing position of the patient like from supine to lateral decubitus so these are the main pathognomonic signs of acute appendicitis right if there is uh, irritation of the peritoneum on the right iliac sign there are some specific symptoms right the first one is called um, shirt sign it's simple or sliding sign Right, Russian name is a uh, Voskresensky sign. Right, so in simple terms, the left hand of the surgeon will hold the shirt and the right palm of the surgeon will slide down from the subcostal area down the anterior abdominal wall and there will be worsening of pain. The second one is a Bloomberg sign. A rebound tenderness right so i already told you about this is actually pain upon a removal of pressure rather than application of pressure to the abdomen specific for peritonitis other symptoms of peritoneal irritation will include Baudouin's chest and uh busted sign right so in Baudouin's chest this will be positive in retrocecal appendix Right, so when the legs are lifted off the bed with the knees extended, the patient complains of pain while pressing on the abdomen. Busted sign, right, so this is an absolute sign of chronic appendicitis pain, right, and tenderness is felt in the right iliac force on inflation of the colon with air. Increased sensitivity or hyperesthesia in the Sharon's triangle. This is the Sharon's triangle, right? It's bordered by the umbilicus, anterior superior iliac spine, and pubic symphysis here. So in this triangle, this Sharon's triangle, there will be hyperesthesia. Right, so this is uh, very important. In children, it is most important to ask about uh, sore throat or flu-like symptoms as these often accompany mesenteric adenitis. Right. Female patients in particular should be asked about dysuria, uh, frequency, uh, cloud strong smelling urine because UTI can uh, have the same low abdominal pain. And uh, we should also ask about uh, menstrual history. A missed period may point to ectopic pregnancy. Pain at mid-cycle may indicate that pain is due to uh, ovulation. Metal schemes and vaginal discharge may indicate pelvic inflammatory disease. Right, So it's just... Um, a simple differential diagnosis of acute appendicitis. In elderly, patients' presentation tend to be atypical, leading to delayed diagnosis. The pain is less and it may present as small bowel obstruction. 
There is also delayed leukocytosis and there is higher risk of perforation and mortality when compared to younger patients. Perforation at the time of surgery is more often seen in young children, like less than five years, and in older adults, like over 60 years, as a result of delayed diagnosis. Right, so uh, some of the important investigations in acute appendicitis. Right, firstly, laboratory tests. So in blood, we do CBC, full blood count. Right, so number one is leukocytosis. Um, usually with concomitant lift shift, right? So the polymorphonuclear neutrophils will be predominant. Urinalysis, this one is helpful in ruling out uh, genital urinary causes of the symptoms, right? So RBCs and uh, WBCs may be present secondary to extension of appendiceal inflammation to the ureter. Significant hematuria, or pyuria and bacteriuria from the catheterized specimen should suggest the underlying uh, urinary tract pathology, right? not appendicitis. The next one uh, after, la after laboratory is imaging. Right, so abdominal x-ray is not particularly useful in most cases, right? Uh, it may review appendicolid or thicolid in actually less than 15%. If you look here, you see the uh, thicolid, right? So it is indicated if there is some clinical suspicion of intestinal obstruction or uh, ureteric colic. Chest x-ray, right? So uh, under the right side of the diaphragm, you can see A, right? It signifies perforation. Right, but I need you guys uh, to tell me what you think because I saw uh, a question. It was asking like, why sometimes you don't see a under the diaphragm if there is perforation of the appendix? That was the question, and the correct answer was that the the luminal volume of the appendix is very small, so there is not enough volume of air that can. Uh, accumulate under the diaphragm that was the answer right so tell me what you think ultrasound right so ultrasound is uh, sensitive like 85 percent and the specificity is 92 percent for diagnosing appendicitis this is especially important in ruling out gynecological pathology and it may rule out uh, ureteric stones pancreatitis ovarian cysts, ectopic pregnancy, and can also confirm appendicular mass or abscess. Right, so uh, these are the features of the appendix normally, right? Compressibility, the appendix is normally compressible. The diameter, usually less than six millimeters, right? So this is the measurement from the outside or to the outside or, right? I will show you this. The the thickness of the wall less than three millimeters. The lumen is usually empty or gas or thickly filled. field. Right? There can be a thicker material. Vascularity. There is no evidence of hypervascularization. Right. So these are the normal um, features of the appendix. All right. So you can see here. Right. This is is actually normal. Right. Thin walled appendix measuring three millimeters, and the appendix is seen in continuity with the cecum. It's very important. This one. So this is the normal appendix. The primary ultrasound features of acute appendicitis include the following, right? So it will be the diameter will be greater than six millimeters from outside to outside wall. Six to eight millimeters is a uh, equivocal zone of uncertainty. Then there is a target sign is hyperechoic center, hyper or hypoechoic rings. Tenderness, maximal tenderness over thickened appendix. Compressibility is non-compressible 
and it may be compressible if there is a perforation if it's perforated um appendicolate or a fecolate in the appendix there will be ecogenic focus with posterior acoustic shadowing vascularity there will be peripheral wall hyperemia in early stages right so in this case you can see increased diameter without significant um a thickening of the wall of the appendix and the lumen is distended and filled with purulent contents right okay so you can see here small appendicolate in acute appendicitis here and here you can see the target sign this is the target sign Here there is a uh, O hyperemia in acute appendicitis, right? You're using Doppler, right? Doppler will show uh, like a blood supply, right? So in this case, there is increased blood flow in the appendicular wall. Tip appendicitis, right? In this case, there is increased diameter and ill-defined wall of the distal end of the appendix. The Localized collection near the distal end favors possible perforation. Normal gut signature sign in the rest of the appendix. Right, next is abdominal CT with contrast, right? It's very sensitive and uh, about 95 to 98% and somewhat specific, right? Specificity 83 to 90% is useful in identifying several other inflammatory processes that may present similarly to appendicitis, right? And we can also see the presence of appendicolate, right? You can see it here, right? The, the appendicolate or the fecolate. Other positive findings include the following. Dilation of the appendix to more than six millimeters in diameter the thickening of the appendicular wall, this will be because of edema, non-filling of the lumen by contrast or air, periappendicular streaking, right, the densities within perimesenteric fat, periappendicular fluid collection, presence of mass or abscess, right, so here in green here you can see fluid-filled appendix, here, thick walled appendix and the appendicolate. Laparoscopy, right? Laparoscopy is most useful in female patients in the reproductive age. Aspiration cytology, right? In this case, the peritoneal fluid is aspired using a fine catheter which is introduced immediately below the umbilicals, and the test is positive if more than 50% of the cells are neutrophils. This will indicate the presence of infection. Right, there is a diagnosis. This method is just is known as Alvarado score or Monreal, right? So uh, Monreal is actually an acronym for migration of pain to the right iliac fossa, anorexia, uh, nausea or vomiting, tenderness in the right iliac fossa, Bloomberg sign, a rebound tenderness, elevated temperature, that's fever of uh, 37.3 or up degrees Celsius, leukocytosis more than 10,000, shift towards neutrophils, neutrophilia, right? So uh, these, uh, these features have one point each, except uh, Bloomberg sign, Bloomberg's, the score is 2, and leukocytosis, the score is 2 again. So if you add, you get 10, right? So 10 is the uh, total score, right? So if you uh, examine these features on the patient, if the score is less than 5, we are not sure if it is appendicitis. The score between 5 and, and six, we'll, we'll, uh, we can conclude that is uh, compatible. Score between six to nine is probable, and more than nine, that's ten. 
we can confirm that this is appendicitis. Right. Complications of acute appendicitis, right? I told you about some of these, right? The first one is appendicular infiltrate. This is a conglomerate of inflamed intestinal loops and strands of omentum soldered together with parietal peritoneum, which separates the inflamed appendix and accumulated exudates from the peritoneal cavity, right? That's appendicular infiltrate. Right. Uh, periappendicial abscess, this one is a localized volume of pus around the inflamed vermiform appendix. Peritonitis, inflammation of peritoneum due to destruction of the appendix or bursting of periappendicial abscess into the abdominal cavity. Pyeliflebitis, right, spreading of microbial infection through the venous system. Uh, from the appendix to the portal system and liver, resulting in formation of uh, phlebitis and liver abscesses. Right. Uh, so these are the complications in general. And I also want to mention, like, um, we, we said, like, uh, if the contents of these uh, do not have pus, it's usually called appendicular mass, in presence of uh, pass inside it will be an appendicular abscess right complications after the surgery after appendectomy after removing the uh, appendix which i will tell you later right so the patient can have paralytic ileus reactory hemorrhage due to slipping of ligature of the appendicular artery residual abscess which can be pelvic paracolic local subdiaphragmatic portal pyemia that's pyeliflebitis recurrent intestinal obstruction this occurs due to formation of adhesions and kinking a right inguinal hernia direct this one is due to uh, injury of the ilioinguinal nerve right during surgery uh, wound infection and sepsis in 10% of the cases. Fecal fistula, usually following the drainage of an abscess. Uh, conservative treatment, uh, antibiotics, IV fluids, dressing, zinc oxide cream over the skin, uh, observation. And most of the time, the fistula subsides, provided that there is no distal obstruction by adhesions or kinking or specific causes like carcinoma or TB, uh, right? So if the fistula persists over six weeks, then resection of ileocecal segment and anastomosis will be indicated. Another complication uh, after appendectomy is respiratory problems and deep vein thrombosis, right? Then treatment of appendicitis in general, right? So Firstly, therapeutic approach uh, in the patient with acute appendicitis. Once the diagnosis of acute appendicitis is set, an urgent operation should be performed. If the diagnosis of acute appendicitis is doubtful, then there will need to be a dynamic monitoring of patient for four to six hours uh, during this period, the patient is repeatedly examined by a surgeon and, and the tests are performed. And if necessary, instrumental examinations and uh, consulting related professionals. Right. So uh, we already told, uh, talked about uh, these examinations. In case of confirmation of diagnosis of acute appendicitis uh, by case monitoring, urgent operation is indicated. If the diagnosis of acute appendicitis is neither confirmed by case monitoring, then COPS rule comes into effect, right? So this, uh, the patient is subjected to the operation. If the diagnosis of acute appendicitis is excluded, it is necessary to clarify the cause of pain syndrome. Right, what is causing this pain if we cannot confirm that is acute appendicitis? Right, so uh, next stage is preparation of surgery. 
right? Uh, shaving of the surgical field, emptying of the urinary bladder, uh, pre-medication, gastric lavage, if operation under general anesthesia is planned. Anesthesia, right? So during uh, appendectomy, we mainly do general anesthesia, right? Uh, intravenous anesthesia is most often used. Endotracheal anesthesia is used in patients with excessive weight in case of peritonitis. If destructive appendicitis is suspected in children and in pregnant women. Local anesthesia, right, in this case is Novocaine infiltration anesthesia, right, is used if general anesthesia is not possible. Surgical treatment, right, we can either do open appendectomy, that's approach from the right iliac uh, region, or inferomedian laparoscopy. Another method is laparoscopic appendectomy, right? So this is open appendectomy. We have uh, four incisions here. The first one, or number one, is called McBenz or grid ion, right? This is an incision placed perpendicular to McBenz point. That is uh, lateral one-third and medial two-thirds of an imaginary line joining the anterior superior iliac spine and the what and the umbilicus. Incision number two is lens lens incision right, or skin crease incision, and this one is uh, cosmetically better, right? Uh, you can see it on number two right here. Um, so approximately two centimeters below the umbilicus, centered on the mid clavicular made inguinal line or number three you can see uh right it's not indicated there uh right uh, you can see it the last one that's number three it's called rutherford morrison right uh, uh, this one involves muscle cutting and the muscles are cut upwards and laterally right cutting the internal oblique and transverse abdominis and will extend McBain, right, will expand, extend McBain by this method. And the fourth one, this one is a right paramedian incision. All right, uh, this is a laparoscopic appendectomy, right, using um, a special equipment, right, so you can uh, make this incision and then you insert a camera and you can see on the monitor, right, and then you uh, you, you put your instruments here to cut the appendix, put it in a, a specific bag and pull it out. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section. Subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends. Until next time.